Welcome to the Good Coin Podcast. I am Chris Enroth, horticulture educator with the University of Illinois Extension, coming at you from Macomb, Illinois. And we have got a garden bite for you this week. We are going to be going back in time when we are chatting with uh, local foods and small farms educator Nick Frillman about tomato problems. And in this clip, Nick talks about blossom end rot. And what is the cause behind it? I know a lot of people talk about, you know, oh, you got to mash up eggshells and throw them into the planting hole of your tomatoes. But does that really work? And do you really need to do that? A lot of folks are doing that this time of year as it is just getting started into planting our warm season veggies. Well, Nick explains what's going on with blossom and rot and solutions for remedying it. Enjoy. Um, so, Nick, I guess on the vein of, of- problems i know a very common problem and i see this just every single year is with both tomatoes and peppers an issue called blossom and rot um this can be something you have your fruit just about to set um you know you see it coming on and then there's something happened at the blossom end the, the the bottom usually of that fruit and it starts rotting what in the world how do you avoid this yeah, so this is yeah probably the most asked tomato question for sure. Um, so blossom end rot is caused by a calcium deficiency, yes. Um, however, our native soils in Illinois, I, I can't speak to you know maybe the Illinois Wisconsin border area, even though that's where I grew up. I guess I can kind of speak to up there. I'm from Lake County. Um, and then I've lived down in central Illinois for the last, you know, eight or so years. I can't speak to southern Illinois, but most of Illinois soils have um, sufficient, if not a massive amount of calcium in the soil. And so when I say blossom end rot is caused by a deficiency in calcium, um, people that know a little bit about our native soil say to me, well, I have calcium in my soil. So what's the issue? The issue is that's a really big cation compared to something like potassium or magnesium getting into soil chemistry a little bit so stay with me folks but (laughs) um but calcium is a really large cation um within the uh tissue of uh your tomato plant and what it needs to move that calcium from the soil to the plant is water and what happens um what typically happens is people get uh really um into gardening at the beginning of gardening season and they're constantly on it with the water and that's fine i mean you shouldn't overwater or underwater um that's a big conversation right there but they're on it with the water and then eventually as the season wears on um some folks you know peter out and don't go uh into the garden as much um and or we get some really crazy droughts or really crazy wet spells um and so what blossom end rot is at the core is inconsistency in watering which in turn causes um, the calcium to be taken to the plant and then not, and then taken to the plant and then not. And so at that point, the plant doesn't have enough calcium to form uh, fruit well, and it starts to abort the end of that plant or the end of the fruit. And you see that nasty brown kind of squishy part at the end of the tomato, and you start to have problems. So how people can best um, prevent blossom end rot is consistent watering. So what that means to um, one part of the state, one type of soil versus another part of the soil in another part of the state, that's different. So I can't really say water one inch every day to all the listeners, because if your soil is completely different than mine, that might be not enough or it might be too much. But so however much you water your tomatoes, just stick to that schedule and you should be good to go with blossom and rot. Wow. Wow. Nick, you took like the soil chemistry thing and you explained it in a way I haven't really heard before and it totally landed. That's that's why I love doing this show because you pick up these nuggets from people and we talk to. That's great. All right, Katie? I, is it, that's like totally, wow. Love it. Take that snippet and create just like a, a short video out of it. Exactly. <laughs> Use it from here on out. And that we did, Katie. We cut that little part out, and now it is here as a little nugget for you to listen to. So as Nick described, the way 
to alleviate or at least lessen the severity of blossom end rot is to have even watering throughout the growing season over the time. It's not necessarily a calcium deficiency. It is more of a watering problem. Now, what other strategies can we use to help us have an even watering uh, for our tomatoes? Well, that would be having a nice mulch layer, which insulates that soil and keeps it evenly watered uh, throughout time. That is the important thing over time. We don't go through these swings of very dry to very wet soil. The other thing to watch out for is don't over fertilize as that can also cause blossom end rot. And the other thing is you can select for some varieties that are known to be resistant to blossom end rot. Well, that was a lot of great information about blossom end rot, how to fix that problem in your tomatoes for this growing season. Well, the Good Growing Podcast is a production of University of Illinois Extension, edited this week by me, Chris Enroth. And a special thank you to our listeners who do what you do best, and that is listening, or if you're watching us on YouTube, watching. And as always, keep on growing.